Hey guys, thanks for watching Tribe Sports Overtime. I'm Kathy and I'm here with Tribe Basketball star Marcus Thornton. So Marcus, by the time this episode airs, you'll probably have broken William and Mary's all-time career points scored. Now to Thornton with three seconds on the clock. Goes into the lane, down the lane, and he is fouled. Well, he was going in that for a monster dunk. <laughs> We have a new leader. Marcus Thornton has become the leading scorer in the history of the College of William and Mary basketball, surpassing the great Chet Giermack, 14 in the first half. What has it been like these past few weeks chasing that record? Uh, it's been it's been cool, you know. But uh, I think you know what I tell most people is I really haven't been focusing on that. You know, uh, the focus for me has been the same as it's been all season. You know, focusing on wins, um, taking care of business in practice, in practice. You know, just doing little things to help us win. So um, uh, it's it's been nice to see that all come along with it, and um, I'm excited for it. But you know, just focusing on my teammates right now has been great. Well, it looks like those little things that you've been doing to win have really been paying off. <laughs> Running the baseline gets it to Marcus Thornton. Marcus with seven. Marcus gets a pick, crosses the timeline. Marcus with three seconds. Marcus on the right side, goes up for three. Good at the buzzer. William and Mary has won this ball game. Marcus Thornton has hit the three-pointer with no time left. The Tribe has won it 68-66, and this ball game is over. The Tribe has come back from a nine-point deficit, but this baby counts, and William and Mary has defeated Drexel twice this year. This game is in the book. As the Tribe goes into these next two games, you guys have control over your destiny. Um, you are vying for the top spot in the CIA. So what is the team's mindset going into this? We have a great mindset. You know, we put ourselves in a great position. You know, we've had some downfalls here and there, but uh, overall we've been able to overcome them and uh, really have a chance to, you know, finish the season, finish this regular season off at, on a great end. So um, our mindset is really good. You know, I think we're really focused and excited for these last two home games. and. Uh, Looking to give our fans, a, you know, a good crowd. I mean, a, a good atmosphere to finish the season off. And then after that, the um, conference tournament kicks off soon, right? And then if you win that, then you get to go to the NCAA tournament. Yes. And so, how does it feel for you personally to be able to lead the team to um, possibly go into the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history? It's great, you know, to be a part of this program uh, that hasn't been the one yet, and uh, just the, you know, the steady progression that we've had over the past four years, myself and Tom. You know, uh, starting off with six wins, you know, having these last uh, two seasons go really well for us. So it's exciting for not only myself and, uh, you know, other captains and leaders on our team. So I'm um, really looking forward to it. We can't look too far ahead. You know, we right. have to focus on one game at a time. That's our goal now. That's our focus. So um, all that's exciting and we're looking forward to it. Awesome. Okay, so let's bring it back to the beginning. Um, you came in as a freshman and you had a really hot start. You finished second on the team in points scored and then you were also conference all-rookie team, right? So how do you think that your hot start has contributed to your success throughout the last few years at the Tribe? Uh, I personally didn't even think it was a hot start. I thought I could have done a lot better my freshman oh, really? year, but uh, I was happy with the, uh, with the success I did have. You know, you always want to be appreciative uh, to make the all-rookie team and, you know, um, score double figures as a freshman is really big time. So um, I think it's helped a lot, you know, um, definitely with your confidence, you know, being able to be successful at the next level. Coming from high school is always important. And uh, just, you know, focusing on constant progression, uh, and continue to, to build and improve myself each year. So uh, that was definitely important for me coming in, and I'm glad I was able to do so. What do you think um, your biggest improvement has been since from freshman year until now? Uh, I think easily just being a vocal leader. You know, coming in, uh, even in high school, I was more of a lead by example guy. You know, um, I'm not extremely outspoken on the basketball court, uh, per se. So, um, you know, just the coaches harping on me and understanding my position and as a leader and, you know, those following me on the court. Uh, just being able to voice my opinion more and, you know, have guys follow my lead and do the right thing has been really key for me. So uh, I have to say that. Cool. Okay, so um, outside of basketball, what else do you want to be well known for doing? Um, definitely a hard worker, you know, someone that's determined, uh, persistent, um, a genuine person. You know, I really pride myself in that. And uh, just being a down-to-earth guy, you know, I don't, I don't really think too highly of myself uh, for any particular reason, you know, just, you know, good guy, you know, good person, good friend, so. We definitely think so, so far. <laughs> glad to hear, good to hear. <laughs> um, what is the funniest thing that you have ever seen happen on the court? Um, Terry Tarpy. Uh, we have these things we call Tarpy plays uh, that Terry makes, and uh, one of, Terry's uh, obviously one of our better players um, on offense and defense, and he's just uh, so active on the court. 
sometimes, you know, uh, early on in his career, probably his freshman, sophomore year, made a lot of, uh, like I said, Tarby plays so safe. He <laughs> gets a block, gets the ball, throws it out of bounds, gets a steal, then scores. So the stuff of that matter. But I have to say this year um, during the JMU game, um, he got a steal, passes it to myself. I pass it back to him. He goes up for a dunk. No one touches him. And uh, he swears someone touches him, and he just completely misses the dunk. He falls to the floor. And it looked like someone just came out of nowhere and a ghost hit him out of the air. So. <laughs> Uh, that's my favorite uh, on the court moment. <laughs> Definitely think I've heard that story before. <laughs> um, okay, what about your favorite um, off the court memory or the funniest thing that's ever happened to you? Um, I would have to say when we were in the Dominican Republic, uh, we had some downtime in between games. So before we played our first game, and uh, we were out by the pool, and there was a an, an instructor doing a water aerobics <laughs> class with uh, you know the running people at the resort. And my mother and Daniel Dixon's mother was in the pool. So we decided to get in the pool with them. And, and me, myself, Brandon, and some other guys got in. And we were doing the water aerobics with all the other moms <laughs> and older adults in the pool and dancing and having fun with it. And Coach Shaver got in himself. So uh, that was a really fun time and fun experience. Wait, so you guys as a team went to the Dominican yes, Republic? Yeah, over, uh, over the summer um, leading to my junior year, we had a uh, out-of-the-country trip. That's and, so uh, cool. But that's, is that, that's organized by, yes. by William & Mary? Yes. So Whoa. we do that trip. Um, once every four years as a Division One program. So that was our first time doing it as a program, and that was a really fun experience for all of That's us. That's so cool. So then you, you also play teams down yeah, there. Yeah, we played two pro We played one pro team twice, and uh, two national teams, the younger team and the official national team. So Wow, what was yeah. that like? It was great. Uh, you know, completely different style. We played a different ball down there, different rules, and, you know, playing against a pro team, and then we played against the, the, you know, the national team that plays against USA in the Olympics, and then um, the 17 and other team. Uh, and that game was uh, really the most fun. I mean, the gyms are really hot down there, not as much air condition. Oh, I bet. Uh, every, uh, all our jerseys were soaked, were slipping all over the place, and playing <laughs> these young guys who were really good and really talented, scrappy guys. So that was definitely a fun experience for all of us. Can I ask how you guys did against them? We did really well. Uh, we went three and one, uh, beat the pro team twice. Wow. Beat the 17 on the team. We lost to the national team. Um, you know, obviously, they're, they're really good. Yeah. You know, that was a good test for us. And, um, I think that was a big part of why we had a great, such a great season last year, you know, having that experience before the season even started and being able to have some extra practices and, and stuff like that were really mesh. So. That's so cool. Yeah. Do you think that you learned anything from the players down there since you did say that they play so differently? Mm -hmm. For sure. You know, um, the physicality level was, was a lot more down there. You know, um, you know, we're out of the country, so, you know, we, uh, we didn't get as many calls our way and we really learned a toughness about us, you know, mm -hmm. how to play and, you know, fight through screens and stuff of that matter. So that was good for us. And I think it carried over a lot. That's so cool. I had no idea that you guys did that. Um, okay, so do you have a pregame ritual? I do. I do for home games. Um, we have shoot around at two. Uh, we have our pregame meal at three thirty in Annis Brick Oven, and then right after our meal, I come back to the gym, uh, put my headphones in, I listen to J Cole. It's my favorite artist. Uh, I kind of lay on the couch till about four forty-five, and then I put my uh, my 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 gear on, uh, my warm-up top. And I go upstairs and shoot um, before anyone else gets on the court by myself, do form shooting, free throws, um, get some game shots in. And then right around 5.30, I go uh, get taped and I join the rest of the team. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So very like get yourself in the zone yeah, kind of thing. For sure. OK. Um, so what is it like being such a well-known student athlete on campus since we are a pretty small campus? Do you ever feel like a celebrity? I do not, actually. Uh, I guess here and there, you know, I recognize my name might be known a little more so. But I don't think I ever feel like a, you know, a true celebrity. Um, to be honest, some people still ask me if, I, if I'm on a football team. So. <laughs> I'm sure you're being humble, because I've definitely <laughs> seen you come into the Leaf or something and like signing autographs and like people flocking to you. So. Yeah, here, here and there people know me, but at the same time, you know, some students who, who don't know who I am. So I like both sides of that. You know, like I said, pretty down-to-earth down -earth person. I don't think you know, too highly of myself. So uh, you know, I enjoy people knowing my name um, you know, for, for, for obvious reasons, but uh, you know, it's, a, it's a good balance for me. That's good. Um, well, what has your favorite act interaction been with a fan? Um, I think the most surprising ones for me are when I'm not on campus or in this area. You know, um, obviously, William Mary is a, uh, a, a vital part of Williamsburg, you know, kind of the heart of Williamsburg. And, you know, you know, it's a small town, not any pro team, so it's easy to kind of flock to William Mary Athletics. Um, I think when we're out, you know, whether it's on the road or just myself, um, whether I'm back home and someone kind of notices me, we you know, we're a smaller school, so you don't think, you know, someone's going to recognize you. It may be the hair, I don't know. But, <laughs> so when I interact with a fan, it's just kind of in a random place out of the blue. That, that really shocks me, and it, you know, uh, it means a lot to me. You know, people care and, and you know, uh, respect me as a player. So. Okay, so that, all right, I have two questions about that. Okay. So when you go home, do you ever feel like you're like a hometown hero? 
I wouldn't say a hometown hero, but you know, I have a lot of people that respect me back home and definitely support. Uh, you never get enough of that. I definitely appreciate it. You know, definitely when I go back to my high school, um, it's a lot of love. You know, a lot of the teachers that I've known, you know, over the years. And uh, the younger kids that, you know, were freshmen when I was a senior, you know, they still know me and stuff of that matter. So, Must um, be a pretty cool feeling. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay, and then you mentioned your hair, mm -hmm. and so I feel like that's like a big part of your persona, it right? Is. So what would you say if like a coach or something told you you had to chop them off? I would not be pleased. <laughs> I would not be pleased. Um, I had that conversation with Coach Shaver um, on my visit because uh, a couple of other schools had told me if I was to come there, you know, I would have to cut my hair. And, really? Uh, yeah, they did. And uh, I asked Coach Shaver, I sat in his office on my official visit and I asked him and he said, you know, I'd be able to keep it. So I was very pleased to that. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, you know, definitely played a, a part in my decision to come in here. So, really, how long have you been growing them out for? Uh, I've had hair, long hair in general. I started growing out in the fifth grade. Um, had cornrows, uh, twists, stuff of that matter. I didn't start dreading my hair until my junior year in high school. So, um, it's been about six and a half years now since I had dreads. But wow. um, dating back to fifth grade, since I've been growing it out. So, long time since I had a haircut. And so, you, you never want to cut them off? <laughs> uh, I will eventually. You know, um, at least I feel that way. I don't know when. Or, you know, if I, uh, I, get, I, I imagine it'll just be one day I'll wake up and it'll just be time to let them go. So hmm. we'll see. Oh, well, I like them. Anyways, <laughs> um, all right, so this is my last question and that's okay. kind of scary, but um, what are your plans after graduation? Uh, it's a big question. Um, obviously, I'd love to continue to play, you know, whether that's NBA or overseas, uh, I'm not necessarily sure yet. Um, obviously, I try to explore my options in the NBA first, you know. Um, We'll see where that goes. You know, hopefully we continue to have a great season here, which is where my focus is. You know, finish out well, and then when that time comes, you know, I'll cross that bridge. Um, if not that, you know, I have a I'm major in kinesiology, so uh, looking, you know, uh, finish or, or, or follow up somewhere in that field. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Interesting. So you would be open to playing overseas or something? Yes. Yes. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for speaking with us, okay, and thank you for me. watching. You're watching Tribe Sports Overtime.